I like to think that uh, when I started the company nearly 40 years ago that uh, there was a, a real deep desire to be able to demonstrate something about how a company could be successful and be good with people at the same time. And that uh, kind of came out of my, my 60s upbringing and it was kind of an interesting time in my life and uh, you always are what you were when type of thing. And, and so that, that carried with me, although uh, at the first stages of the business, you're working at building things and making things happen. And, and yet there's this interest in seeing if we can't demonstrate something that's even better in how people are treated, for instance. And so I, I did some early on uh, experiments, tried not to have uh, uh, a, uh, a rule book, for instance, and tried to assume that people were just going to come with their own desires. And I, I learned that I needed to have a few rules, that I had to have some basic things that people could relate to, and that actually people wanted that sort of, a, a, of a understanding and guidelines. And we ended up calling them guidelines uh, as opposed to a rule book. And I tried to create it in a, in a positive way, do this as opposed to not do this. And, and so those are some of the early things that we did. And it really wasn't until the 90s that we started having some uh, real uh, clear understanding of what uh, this whole kind of uh, system approach to uh, what now people call sustainability. And that language didn't come really to me until the early 2000s in terms of understanding that there was a language around sustainability. We did some, some work in the 90s around uh, trying to figure out how to employ people on welfare and do it successfully and, and do it beneficially for both them and ourselves. Uh, and and that, was, uh, that proved to be quite positive. And, and I, I um, ended up doing a a case study at, at, at Cornell University and that case study uh, was about just a was unrelated to the social side but it was uh, allowed me to get in front of the class and and be able to tell them uh, uh, what I was uh, thinking about and what we actually ended up doing in that case and I'm still teaching that case to this day as a matter of fact but at one point in time this is an entrepreneurship class the professor turned to me and said uh, uh, you know, why don't you talk about uh, your business a little bit uh, in broader terms, and I did, and I started talking about the Midwest and values and things that last forever, and in and and, and this entrepreneurship class, he said, Fred, we don't teach that here. We, uh, we teach maximizing value in three to five years and selling it. Uh, that's how we create value. And I said, well, that's not exactly what I believe, and he suggested that maybe I should teach a course on, on that, and so that's when I started diving into really understanding the, the, uh, the workings of sustainability and how, and how you think about it. And I've been teaching that course for about 10 years now. One of the, one of the key things that most people think about when they, t when they think about sustainability is they think about this trade-off. They, they say, well, I'll, I'll do it when I get, a, you know, when I get uh, wealthy enough or when I you know when I after I've created enough value I can start doing these nice things and so they think of it as a zero-sum game uh, if I do something good for society or good for the environment it's taking away from my my, my uh, the growth of the company or the financial prowess of the company and and what I've learned is that it really is complementary that that, that uh, you can you can and, and, and should be trying to do both and, and that the, uh, not only is it good for the business, but it can be good for the community and good for the individuals involved, uh, good for uh, the environment, society. It's, it, is, it truly is one of those that can be a win-win-win. The, the place of where it starts is kind of, uh, I, I think, undefinable. I think it can start in many different places. Uh, we certainly have thought about our purpose as an organization and, and we've actually uh, come to the conclusion as an organization that our purpose is to make a positive impact on society and the environment and uh, uh, be able to make a profit uh, doing that. So it, it's, a, it's an important element for us to think about how that can be a both and. And so that, that sets the tone. Um, and our, our objective as an organization is to be all about sustainability and um, 
innovation so that we can have those two working hand in hand. And in fact, the title of my course at one point in time was called uh, Sustainability as a Driver for Innovation. And in fact, it, it can be. As you take a look at these very difficult issues uh, we have in, our, in, in front of us right now, uh, a very significant question about energy. Uh, we've got a lot of folks in denial about that. And we want to look back and say we've just been fine. We're going to be fine in the future. <clears throat> and in fact, it's not, not fine. We've, we've got some pretty... Uh, rough uh, time in front of us and, and uh, uh, there's no simple solution. It isn't just a matter of, in the case of oil, it isn't just a matter of drilling more holes in the ground. We've got something like 2% of the world's uh, resources and uh, we've got 4% of the world's population and we're, we're consuming 25% of the, of, the, of the oil and so it's just, it's, there's just, that, that, that isn't going to work. That equation, that just is not going to be uh, something that we can uh, plan on going forever. So using that as a mindset, um, how do we as a, as a business uh, think about that? Uh, we think that we need to be working on things that we can impact. For instance, in the plastics industry, uh, we can be working at light weighting. Uh, we can make things lighter. Uh, we're, we're very interested in, in that uh, field and we've been able to do that in our acoustics business where how do you make things quiet and light? Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, conundrum for us that we've solved. We're, we've got some creative solutions as a result of that. Um, we've been looking at uh, all, you know, renewable energy. Uh, so we've got a, a renewable energy division now that, that is uh, addressing that. And we started out thinking about uh, doing rooftop uh, uh, small wind turbines and that uh, hasn't, hasn't turned out to be as good. Uh, the, the economics don't work out so well, but we've morphed that into a, a real um, uh, development uh, organization now. So we're actually able to develop uh, what we call behind the meter distributed energy uh, uh, solutions that are involving solar and wind. So we, we, uh, we, we think about how we can solve these problems and then we uh, develop our solutions for them so that we're staying not just even but ahead uh, of the game from an innovation standpoint. Triple bottom line being uh, social, environmental, and financial and uh, the idea that, that uh, there are, are more than just the financial side of it. Um, and we, I, I prefer to personally think of it as impact. Uh, what kind of impact can we make in the world? Uh, as businesses, we have this wonderful opportunity to make a tremendous positive impact in the world. Uh, and we can choose to do that in many different ways. And, and many, many define that as uh, making as much money as you can and then giving some of that back. And I always, I always like to quip, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're giving it back, it means you took it in the first place. But uh, uh, the, the, uh, I, the, the objective here is to be able to uh, intertwine your business model with this positive impact on society and environment. It's, it's really a sound business concept. Um, the, the, um, uh, the idea that we are, uh, you know, can do anything we want to do in business as long as we make money and then uh, we can use that money to do good things uh, is really, uh, it's okay philosophy, but there, there's, there's so much more potential if you weave it into your business model as well. concept in its simplest form is starting with something good and then figuring out how to make that good business. And maybe the best example of that is our, our um, hydrate biosan water filter that we're doing in our group we call Triple Quest, which is a, um, a group that's, that's really coming up with solutions for developing countries uh, that are going to help people uh, be healthy and, and, uh, and, and help them be uh, able to have a, a good uh, life from the standpoint of being able to earn a good living. Uh, you can't earn a good living if you can't be healthy. And so you start with, with health as your basic uh, concept. And so these are products that help, help folks in developing countries. And the, um, the Biosan water filter was an idea that was uh, presented to us uh, as an opportunity for investment, uh, that we could be doing this, uh, first of all, uh, just helping people make these out of concrete. Well, concrete uh, biosand water filters are about 300 pounds, 
and to try to transport them into rural villages is, is difficult. And yes, it used some local labor, but it was a very slow process. And so we decided to invest in a, um, a, a plastic mold to be able to make these uh, and, and uh, contacted the inventor and developed our relationship so that we could in fact uh, uh, be uh, legally responsible for having these dis this distribution around the world. And we started initially with a nonprofit, and that uh, didn't work well for the nonprofit. They had some difficulties. Uh, so we teamed up with the WindQuest Group, uh, an investment uh, group here in Grand Rapids. And uh, we are now uh, in our third year of, of uh, making this uh, go from a very small fledgling business to something that's uh, quite powerful at this point in time. We've impacted over a quarter of a million lives at this point in time with, by distributing these filters and, and uh, we're not intending to lose money on this, we're intending to make profit on it. Uh, we, we've got to demonstrate that yet, but it's, uh, it's in, in fact uh, something that we're, we're very close to, uh, to proving. I mean, when you think about the market, the market's very large. There are, are over two million people die each year from waterborne illnesses around the world, uh, and, and uh, they are very preventable. Uh, at any given time, a very large percentage of the people in, in hospital beds around the world are, are there because of waterborne illnesses, and this uh, addresses that market uh, and does it very effectively. It's a relatively low cost. Uh, it lasts for 10 years plus. It doesn't have any uh, electricity requirements. It doesn't have any moving parts. It doesn't have any uh, requirements for replacing the, the medium. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, a robust uh, model that can be useful for a long, long time. Well, the pink card story is a wonderful story. Um, uh, Joanne Perkins, who leads our container group, uh, tells this story that uh, both her mother and her grandmother uh, succumbed to cancer when they were 51 years old. Uh, so when she turned 52, it's unusual that she uh, revealed her age, but uh, when she turned 52, uh, she was very pleased with that event and, and felt as the oldest uh, uh, of, the, of the family that had achieved that, that she had a special responsibility to, to mark that occasion. And she wanted to, she just had this idea that maybe we could turn our, our trash containers into a pink container. And she contacted the American Cancer Society and they agreed and they, they liked the concept. Uh, we're donating $5 per container that is sold uh, to the American Cancer Society for breast cancer awareness in the very region that they are purchased. So if, uh, if a community buys uh, a significant number of them, they get, uh, they get all that money for that uh, particular, uh, particular city. And uh, we've now donated over $250,000 and uh, over 50,000 carts have been sold. We had our, just had our first community that bought 15,000 uh, that they uh, want to distribute throughout the community. So it's an entire community that is, is uh, rolling out pink carts every, every week. Um, and it's, it's, been, um, it's been good for us in that uh, we now have a, uh, kind of a, a new um, uh, way of communicating with our ultimate consumer, the, the end user, uh, through Facebook. We've got over, I think it's up to 40,000 Facebook fans now. And it's uh, uh, something that is, gives us a new area of social media that we would not have had before. But it really feels good that it's, it's helping uh, uh, from a health standpoint, helping with breast cancer awareness. We all have a, a, uh, uh, a breast cancer uh, story in our lives and uh, this is very important to me as well. I like the diversity because I think it provides a platform for growth in many different areas. Um, and it, it does mean that, that uh, we have to get expert in those areas. So it's not a matter of just uh, kind of sprinkling our, our resources around. We have to be able to demonstrate that we can in fact have good growth in each of those areas. The, um, uh, the diversity really comes from uh, an overall desire to want to build a, um, a channel to market and then manufacture for that channel, providing those, those uh, kinds of creative thoughts and, and ideas uh, that meet the need of the, of the customer and, and 
we can hopefully uh, be uh, delighting the customer in areas that they don't know that they need yet, but that, that's the, the kind of thing that we're, we're driving towards. So we want to have a, a good channel to market and then manufacture for that channel. I think of Cascade as, a, as demonstrating um, something that I think can work. And, and so from that standpoint, I like the idea that we're out in front of some of these things. Of course, there is the, the challenge of trying to make sure that that doesn't uh, result in, in uh, the business being diverted or that it uh, uh, you know, takes away from the financial prowess of the organization. But uh, in general, um, I believe that there needs to be a little tension between the, you know, the smooth production of things and uh, being able to create that next new thing out there. And, and uh, if, you, if, it's, if it's too easy, if it's too content, uh, you, you probably need to stir it just a little bit. We've been very fortunate. The, I mean, the, the growth over the last three years since the Great Recession has been good for us. We, we're, we're, uh, all three years have been uh, uh, double-digit growth and, and uh, close to 20 percent this past year so it's 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 growth that we are very fortunate to have and and yes some of it is maybe a lot of it is because we're willing to take some of these uh, uh, looks at new things but it is interesting how symbiotic the, that is it, it, the, the biosand water filter is a very small project right now uh, but it is uh, introducing us to new players and to getting us into new areas. We, it, we're, we're doing some international work now that we would not have done without it. Uh, we have some, uh, some interest from, from uh, suppliers and others that, that uh, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have without that plan, that program. So uh, they all, it has a way of, of, of helping the, uh, the relationships throughout the company. that we can help inform uh, some policy around uh, what business can do from the standpoint of solving some of our most intractable problems. Uh, our welfare to career program has demonstrated that uh, we can save on average about $10,000 per person for the state of Michigan that's involved in, a, in, in this kind of a program. We retain at very high percentages, 97% plus per month of our uh, folks that are on welfare that are working here stay with us uh, month after month. And uh, that's, a, that's something that not many programs can, can claim as a result of going from welfare to, uh, to work, people often say. We say career because we want them to stay with us. We want them to be here a long time. We've developed a, a career path for them. So we have uh, people that enter at one level and, and can grow into significant other levels so that they can better their their financial resources as a result. This kind of work can in fact impact positively on the state. If we can figure out how to employ folks off welfare, our experience is that there's a lot of people on welfare that really are very good uh, employees and they need support. They just need support getting through that, that uh, transitional phase. And we learn how to do that. In fact, we even have a state social worker that, that's on, on the premises that helps us uh, solve those problems. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty interesting program. We've actually got a consulting uh, uh, arm now that helps people uh, adapt these sorts of things. So it's a, um, it's a, uh, I hope we can do more of that. We've got another program we're working now with returning citizens, so that people that are formerly uh, in prison, uh, that are uh, now returning to their to their uh, their communities, uh, they need a job. If they're going to be able to be successful, uh, they need to be able to be employed. I'm very proud of the of the uh, folks that we have selected here to to be able to do that. Uh, uh, Jahan McKinley is a great example. He started with us uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, within six months, uh, he, uh, he was a, a supervisor with us, and we're just thrilled with his natural abilities that he has developed. He spent five years uh, before he was released preparing himself for this, for this opportunity, and we're just the great recipient of his work.
the overarching philosophy, if you will, is that I want to be sure that everybody who works within Cascade Engineering knows they are valued, and knows they're valued as a human being, and knows that they're valued because they're doing valuable work. And, and those are two very important uh, aspects, and, and, I, and, and knows is an important word, not just feels or patronized, but really knows, feels deeply, that, uh, knows deeply that they are valued. And uh, so we spend a fair amount of time uh, explaining to people when they first come to work for us that uh, these are these are what we expect. These are the these are this is what the culture is is uh, is about here. Um, we we talk about uh, anti-racism. We've decided to be an anti-racism organization. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, that means that we don't tolerate uh, inappropriate behavior. It means that we respect everybody that's that's working here. Uh, it means that if you are act inappropriately, it can cost you your job. Uh, and we just make that clear to folks. And, and we go to great lengths to try to uh, explain what that means. And, and we even do some diversity theater where we bring in some actors and have them uh, uh, act out uh, scenes that uh, uh, are involving not just racism, but all the other isms that are out there and, and uh, how inappropriate behavior can lead to conflict and can lead to really waste in the organization uh, and and we so we, we work at, at, at having the actors act that out and then the audience has an opportunity to suggest ways in which that might be changed for that for that particular scene and we use actual scenes that have actually happened in the organization so it's uh, it's a powerful way to uh, exhibit that kind of uh, uh, corrective behavior we hope people will take when they when they join us Automotive, from, from our standpoint, has uh, uh, shrunk in its, its importance to our total uh, portfolio. It's now about 20, 25% of our total business. Uh, so it's, um, it's a lot less than it used to be at uh, 80 or 90% at one point in time. Uh, but it's uh, an area that's still very important to us. Uh, the, the automotive industry is one that has gone through lots of cycles. Uh, the most recent downturn was pretty severe for lots of folks and uh, uh, we were not unlike lots of people having lost like maybe 40 percent of our orders in, the, in a quarter. Uh, so it's uh, one that we, we do uh, uh, want to make sure we have around. Uh, we have to find those niches that we can be contributing to. As an innovative, sustainable company, we need to find those areas that they want to have uh, innovation and sustainability involved in. Um, and I think that there is a growing awareness now, especially as they have this new uh, mandate for uh, 54 and a half uh, miles per gallon. Uh, and uh, we, we have some good ideas about how we can do that. We, we're, we're our light waiting, uh, you know, stay tuned. We've got some ideas there that can help uh, dramatically in that area. Uh, we've got some uh, some projects we're working on that can take some of the VOCs out of the coatings. Um, so we're, we're working heavily on trying to uh, be a little more on the environmentally uh, helpful side. Uh, and it's those kinds of products that we'll be uh, providing for the automotive industry as opposed to another Me Too, uh, if you will, in terms of trying to uh, uh, survive in that environment. We want to be on the creative side. Now the B Corp's a, a relatively new idea, about three or four years old, uh, started by three very successful young entrepreneurs that have decided that they wanted to help uh, recognize those organizations that are uh, wanting to be known as uh, in the sustainable field and so they've created a, a set of standards that uh, can kind of take the the noise out of uh, I'm, I'm more sustainable than you type of thing and you can actually uh, uh, sign up for a rating uh, and be certified as a B corporation and you are signing up to be uh, allowing yourself to be transparent about that uh, so that you will uh, your ratings can be seen. You can see ours on the website and you can see how we're doing in all the various areas. Um, and you're willing to uh, change your bylaws to be able to say that uh, there, you'll consider stakeholders other than just the shareholders when making important decisions. Um, 
and, and it's a commitment to becoming better and, and wanting to make a, a more positive influence. So and it gives the consumer and the customers uh, a way of evaluating uh, whether or not uh, the company is, is really walking the talk. Uh, it's, it's really uh, catching on. There are over 500 uh, organizations now that uh, are, are uh, certified as B Corporations. Uh, we're the largest uh, until uh, Patagonia just uh, signed on, which is great. And uh, I had fun uh, uh, helping in that process a little bit. But it's, it's a really uh, good organization. I think it's, uh, it's also looking into a, 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 a reporting technology for international businesses uh, so that uh, there will be an, an investor uh, uh, quality to this as well. So it's uh, one of the, well, I think one of the interesting things about the emerging, what I call the emerging sustainable economy, is that we are beginning to see investors, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, consumers, all willing to uh, um, look at uh, the sustainable uh, world a little more closely and, and, and actually uh, willing to buy and invest their time and their money uh, in, in making this happen. So I think it's a, an emerging field. I, I don't think it's anywhere as near the, uh, uh, the popular middle yet. Uh, it's, it's still emerging. But I think it makes so much sense that we, it's worth a second look by lots of folks. I think it's worth um, uh, investing in. I think we're seeing that that there's a, a, a broader number of people that are realizing, for instance, that our resources are not um, infinite, that we need to be able to think about that as a real constraint. And we've got, uh, you know, even governments are willing to think about how business can interact with them in a new way and to be able to help solve some of these problems. So these are the indicators of an emerging sustainable economy. I think it would be terrific if the country were to adopt that, even, and even West Michigan or Michigan, as we think about that, how, what, would it, what would it be like if we had a concentration of B Corps uh, in, in Michigan, for instance, or West Michigan? Uh, what would that say about the state? Would that be attractive to those folks who, who are, are interested in this kind of uh, life in the future? Uh, we are looking for in-migrants, if you will, into Michigan. Uh, this could be a real attractor. Cascade is, a, is an organization that uh, is creative, innovative, and really, I think we want to be known as the organization that is uh, thinking ahead of the curve because when we're thinking about sustainability, we're thinking about those things that are long term. And as a private company, we get a chance to think about the long term, uh, more so than those that are public and are being required to report their earnings every, qu every quarter. Uh, we can be a little more patient about how we're going to earn that uh, going forward and we can be exploring in those areas that are, are going to be providing the solutions for the long term and that will be, uh, you know, we're trying to build a, the concept of not having to worry about the spike in problems that are, uh, can possibly come. Um, the, the, a spike in the cost of, of, of oil and, 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 and gasoline uh, is one of the reasons I drive a Volt. I, 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 I like to say that, that my Volt right now has got 150 miles per gallon average uh, from the time I bought it. And uh, I'm going up on that. I, it's been, uh, it's been uh, weeks since I stopped and, and got out of the gasoline. Uh, I don't worry about the price of gasoline. And that's the kind of thing that we need as a country to be able to lower our demand. We, we're not going to get there by increasing supply. We've got to lower demand. I know that doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, thrill the oil companies that much, but I'd much rather make plastics out of oil than I would to, make, uh, to burn it up as a fuel. And I think we, it's a wonderful molecule, and we should be able to, to have that, uh, uh, that molecule around for a long, long time, and we will. But we do need to reduce our demand. That's the only way we're going to get price down at this point in time. I, I hope that uh, Cascade Engineering is thought of as the kind of organization where we are innovative, creative, and thinking about the future because we're focusing on sustainability and innovation as our key elements. And we can deliver solutions that are useful, creative, 
and profitable uh, at the same time.